हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू लेक्चर सेवन ऑफ ऑनलाइन केमिस्ट्री क्लासेस इन लास्ट क्लासेस वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द क्वेश्चंस ऑन सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स एंड आल्सो वी हैव स्टार्टेड कॉन्सेप्ट्स ऑफ एटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स बिकॉज दीज आर द टू वर्ड्स व्हिच वी यूज फ्रीक्वेंटली इन आवर स्टडी ऑफ केमिस्ट्री so we should able to distinguish between these two words because if we do not distinguish them uh, many our calculations will get wrong so we define atom as the smallest particle of an element which may or which may not have stable independent existence now why we are saying that which may or which may not have stable independent existence because the elements occur in nature in combined form they never occur as uncombined form only the noble gas element helium neon argon xenon this type of elements they occurs as the atom form and their atoms are having stable and independent existence but apart from that if we consider hydrogen oxygen nitrogen phosphorus sulfur all these elements they always occurs in a combined form so their atoms do not have stable independent existence if their atoms do not have stable independent existence then which entity has stable independent existence that entity we call it as a molecule so how we define molecule we said molecule is the smallest particle of substance now what we mean by substance here it can be element or it can be compound which have stable independent existence for example if we take this one close container and if we add helium gas to it I will write names so that we will distinguish between atoms and molecules. And in another container, if we enclose the oxygen gas. Now, if you want to know the smallest unit of this helium gas, which exists in a stable, independent form, is nothing but H e, not H e two. It is just H e. It means single atom. It exists independent and it is stable. But for this oxygen, it is not O. It is O two. O is oxygen atom is true. But it won't exist in a stable independent form. It exists in the form of O two. It means. in this sample if you want to know the smallest particle which is actually existing it is o2 not the oxygen so o2 is the molecule here helium is the molecule here it is atom as well as molecule because it is able to exist independently and it is stable but o2 is the molecule not the oxygen because oxygen is unable to exist independently and with stability but o2 exists as the stable entity and as the independent entity i hope that you understood this difference now if we classify the molecule that difference will be again more clear the molecules can be classified in two broad ways one is homo atomic molecules and another is hetero atomic molecules now what are the homo atomic molecules these molecules consist of atoms of same element 
That's why we call it as homo. Means same, similar. And hetero means different. So we can say these are consists of atoms of different elements. Now there are again they are subdivided into mono atomic diatomic and polyatomic example mono atomic is no gases because their molecules contain only single atom helium neon argon diatomic example is hydrogen oxygen nitrogen chlorine fluorine iodine bromine all halogens and polyatomic phosphorus which contains four atoms of phosphorus it makes a molecule and that molecule exists in a stable and independent form and it is for sulfur as many as eight atoms they combine together chemically and they exist as the molecule so it is homo atomic because it consists of atom of same same element hydrogen element hydrogen atom hydrogen molecule oxygen molecule nitrogen molecule phosphorus molecule sulfur molecule for the heteroatomic we said that they consist of atoms of different elements we have two types diatomic and polyatomic we cannot have monoatomic monoatomic can be part of only homo atomic molecules the example of diatomic molecules is carbon monoxide nitrogen monoxide two atoms are involved carbon and oxygen and two different atoms are involved that's why it is heteroatomic molecule here the example is h2so4 poly meaning atoms elements are involved here hydrogen sulfur and oxygen nitric acid hno3 hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen is involved so question can be asked for one mark give the example of homo atomic molecule which consists of only one element which consists of different element so this is type of molecules definition and the difference exact difference between atoms and molecules are to be understood now after learning the definition of atoms and molecules and learning their differences we will go further and now we are going to learn about atomic mass but as we learn atomic mass simultaneously we learn molecular mass because just like atoms and molecules we learn simultaneously atomic mass molecular mass so we have to learn again simultaneously so that similarities and differences of these two concepts will be very much clear now every atom being a matter it has mass how to calculate it various scientists have made various attempts it started with dalton he only gave the concept of atom and atomic mass and for molecule he called compound atom avogadro then coined the word molecule these are historical details we will we'll not go into that but atoms has masses 
it has to be calculated this was very old concept since beginning the dalton has tried it in fact it was supposed to be a fundamental property and various attempts of classification of elements were based on that of masses so we know that but as science progressed further we made improvisations in the definitions to make it more and more relevant to make it more and more simpler and now we are in a position to define atomic mass how we are defining it for example if we have an object which is 10 kg how we say that it is 10 kg what is the basis the basis is we know what we mean by 1 kg and this object is 10 times heavier than what we believe as 1 kg for example if we have this this type of balance and we have this object here then we put 1 kg here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then this two levels are equal and then we say that this is this must be 10 kg because to equalize this we are at units of 10 units of 1 kg weight isn't it so this is the reference this is the reference for weighing an object we cannot have kilogram and gram as the reference units here because we are dealing with very very small particles atoms and molecules so what we have selected as a unit is we have selected 1 atom of c12 carbon having mass number 12 isotope 1 atom we have selected and we have made one well part of it and we are comparing the mass of an atom with this for example we want to know the sodium atom is there and how many times it is heavier to that that will give us the concept of atomic mass so this kilogram or gram is replaced by 1 twelfth of 1 atom of c12 this we call it now as 1 amu atomic mass unit also called as 1u also called as 1 dalton and the value of this is 1.66 into 10 to the minus 24 gram equals to 1.66 into 10 to the minus 27 kg if it is in kg like that so this 1 kmu is used instead of 1 kg when we weigh an atom if we say sodium atom has atomic mass 23 amu what it means it means that it is 23 times heavier than what we call it as 1 amu and that 1 amu is nothing but 1.66 into 10 to the minus 24 gram or in kilogram is 1.66 into 10 to the minus 27 kg so how to define atomic mass see the definition and again things will be more clear to you we can say atomic mass is a number it is number which indicates which indicates you also write this definition which indicates how many times how many times how many times 
the mass of one atom the mass of one atom of element is heavier than one twelfth part of mass of one atom of C12. See the definition. This is a number which indicates how many times the mass of one atom of element is heavier than the one twelfth part of mass of one atom. So this A equals to mass of one atom of element divided by 1 by 12 2 into mass of one atom of C12. If we consider the mass of one atom of carbon 12, it is 1.99 into 10 raised to minus 23 gram. If we multiply it with 1 by 12, means if we divide it by 12, this happens to be that number we are talking about 1.66 into 10 to minus 24 gram, which is nothing but one atomic mass unit, which is also called as charge. So it is a mass of one atom of element divided by 1 AMU, one atomic mass unit. What is the molecular mass then? Similarly, we can extend this concept. We can say it is a number, it is a number which indicates, which indicates how many times, how many times the mass of one molecule of substance, it may be atoms or it may be element or it may be compound, molecule of substance heavier than heavier than same reference one twelfth part of mass of one atom of C12. So molecular mass is equal to mass of one molecule of substance divided by 1 by 12 multiplied by mass of one atom of C12 and this one twelfth of mass of one atom of C12 that is equal to one atomic mass unit and that is equal to 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 24 gram. So it number which indicates how many times the given species, maybe atom or molecule, is heavier than one twelfth part of mass of one atom of C12. So we have one reference here, mass of one atom of C12. We made 12 equal parts of it and we are comparing that weight to the weight of atom of given element, mass of given element. So these are two definitions and they are very important definitions and mass of one atom is 1.99 into 10 to minus 23 we have divided 12 times and we get this number. So what is the value of atomic mass unit 1.66 into 
to 10 to minus 24 gram or 1.66 to 10 to minus 27 kilogram and also called as dal. Now next part we can say that if we take an example here, hydrogen has atomic mass 1.008 amu which is nearly taken as 1 amu. Oxygen has 16 amu. Chlorine has 35.5 amu. We don't we not to remember all. They will give it bracket. And as we study chemistry, many atomic masses we use again and again. And we may able to remember them also. But absolutely it is not necessary. The sodium is 23 AMU. These are two examples I have given. Now what do you mean by 16 AMU? It means one atom of oxygen is 16 times heavier. Then what? Then one twelfth part of mass of one atom of C2. Not only mass of one atom of carbon. We are multiplying it by 1 by 12. It's actually we are dividing it. So that's how we should be able to read these numbers. 16, 35.5, 23, 1. What we mean by this? What is mean by atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 in It means the mass of one atom of hydrogen is equal to, because ratio is 1, it means it is equal to 1 twelfth part of mass of one atom of C2, like that. So this is the way in which it is to be defined. Even though the definition seems to be lengthier, if it is asked for, we have to write this in a same way. Now, we will have one more point in the atomic mass. What is the actual mass of an atom of an element? See the formula, H1. The actual mass of an atom, actual mass of an atom of element is equal to atomic mass in AMU multiplied by 1.66 into 10 to minus 24 gram. For example, the actual mass of one atom of oxygen is equal to atomic mass in the is 16 multiplied by 1.66 into 10 to the minus 24 gram and if we do this calculation 2.656 into 10 to the 2 it should be minus 23 gram similarly we can say that for molecular mass we will see one more point and then we will go to the molecular mass that in molecular mass, I will write here because all these formulas are so important. The molecular mass is nothing but sum of atomic masses of elements. For example, molecular mass of oxygen is equal to 2 into atomic mass of oxygen 2 into atomic mass of oxygen is 16 and that's why it is 32 AMU. We can add this for H2O it is 2 into 1 plus 16 which is 18 AMU. 
so molecular mass is nothing but sum of the atomic masses which are present in a molecule sum of atomic masses present in a molecule we can write as present in a molecule present in molecule and this we add together and we get this numbers the next thing we can say actual mass of a molecule so right here actual mass of molecule see the difference between molecular mass and actual mass of molecule actual mass of molecule of substance is equal to here we have written atomic mass in amu we can write molecular mass in amu multiplied by this one atomic mass unit and we we'll give one example once again of oxygen only actual mass of molecule actual mass of one molecule actual mass of one molecule of oxygen is equal to molecular mass in amu is 32 1.66 into 10 is 24, and if we multiply this together, I have answer here 5.312. 5.312 into 10 is minus 23. So this atomic mass, actual mass, molecular mass, actual molecular mass, and their relation with the one amu. This is to be important here to understand. Now, if we consider the atomic mass of chlorine, which is thirty-five point five amu, atomic mass. of chlorine is equal to 35.5 am now it is in fraction why it comes in fraction because some elements most of the elements we should say exists as isotopic mixture isotopes Atoms of same element having same atomic number but different mass number, and then what we get is the average relative atomic mass. It is nothing but summation of percentage abundance by hundred. Multiplied by atomic mass. I will give an example. Chlorine exists into two isotopes. The atomic number is seventeen, thirty-five and thirty-seven. These are two mass numbers. This isotope having atomic mass thirty-five is seventy-five percent, and this isotope. Is 25 percent. If you want to know average relative atomic mass, apply the formula percentage abundance is 75 divided by 100. Atomic mass is 35 plus summation is how many isotopes are there? We have to go on adding them. 25. Into 100 into 37. This is 
3 and 4 and divide by 24. So this is 3 into 35, 15 plus 1, 9 plus 1, 0, 4 and this is 37 by 4. So 37 plus 5 is 142 by 4. 4 threes are 12. 5 remains 20. 2 remains 5. Okay. In this way, this mass happens to be 35.5 am. Why there are fractions? Because they are existing in isotopic mixture. Different isotopes or different abundance spaces. How much? To what extent they are present? To different percent. And by looking into percentage, this is to be calculated. So this is one way to understand this. Now depending on that, we will take uh, one question here so that we will understand the concept of percentage of abundance. The element existing too. So you just write these points, correlate these points with the textbook and notes, and you'll understand what we are learning. So what question we are writing here is there is a naturally occurring neon. Naturally occurring neon. Consist of consist of three isotopes. Three isotopes. Neon with mass number twenty. Neon with mass number twenty one. Neon with mass number twenty two. There. Percentage abundance is or abundance in nature are 90.51 for this 20, then 0.27 and 9.5. Two two percent, respectively. Calculate average atomic mass of muon. Now we can apply the formula. And we can say average atomic mass is summation of percentage abundance divided by 100 into isotopic mass because different isotopes are different masses that is equal to 90.51 divided by 100 for this respectively means for this first one 20 is the isotopic mass plus 3 are there 0.27 into 100 21 and last one 9.22 into 100 into 22 we carry on this calculations and what we get is 20.17 is the average 
atomic mass of it. Multiply this by 50 by 100, multiply by 21 by 100, multiply by 22 by 100, and just, just add this. The denominator is same 100, 100, 100, and you simplify this. The calculation part is not difficult, only we have learned here how to use formula. One last question now that will again on the isotopic abundance only. Serious question. Slightly different than this. You go on writing the numbers to the question. I have not numbered, numbered it, but your notebook it should be numbered clearly. Carbon occurs. Carbon occurs in nature as a mixture of as a mixture of C12 and C13 I know that you already want this the average atomic mass the average atomic mass of Carbon is twelve point zero one one. What is the abundance? What is the abundance? Means in what percent abundance of C twelve in nature? So they have asked about this percentage abundance. They have given the atomic mass. 100 we know. Constant. Isotopic masses is also given. And percentage abundance they have asked. So we can say let the percentage abundance percentage abundance of C12 is X. Then average atomic mass will be 1. So you can say X by 100 multiplied by 12. This I have written for carbon 12. If C12 is X, what is C13? It is 100 minus X, isn't it? Because only two are present, and the summation of this percentage abundance is 100. If one is x, another is 100 minus x divided by 100 into isotopic mass is 13, and that equals to 12.011. So you can just simplify this 12x plus. 1300 minus 13x in this 100 we transfer it to another side 